Okay, so what we've got for you today is we're going to do a tilt steering column install on this 1976 Ford Bronco. Now there's going to be a sump, something a little bit different about this tilt install than what you may have experienced or what we've done in the past. We're going to let you kind of pick up on that as we go along. Uh, but before we get started, we want to make sure everything works. Our turn signals, our brake lights, our running lights. We want to make sure that works before we start ripping apart this Bronco because then when we put in the new column, if it works now, we put in the new column, we wire it up correctly, everything should be working when we're done. But before we get started, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to disconnect the battery. You say, why, why disconnect the battery? It's just standard safety procedure, and we don't have time to go into Broncos driving down the street without their owners and wrenches getting dropped on starter solenoids and stuff like this. Just take our word for it, be safe, disconnect the battery. So we're going to do that, then I'll show you this column in just a second, and then we'll get started on so the So here's part. a quick peek at our tilt steering column we're about to put in. Okay, first things first. I'm going to work inside the engine compartment. This is a 76 Bronco with a rag joint up at the top. I'm going to disconnect the lower shaft from the upper shaft of the steering column. It's got a 12 point on it. I'm just going to get that dude off of here right quick. Okay, so we took the bolt out here. Now we just need to take this lower shaft off of the upper shaft and that can just be chilling in the engine compartment. And then we've got a little clamp here. There's the bolt right there for the clamp holding the column to the outside of the firewall. So we're gonna remove that and then we're gonna go to the inside of the interior and start working on that. Okay, so now we're going to move to the interior, and one of the first things we're going to look at, hopefully I can get a shot of this, on the inside of the firewall, there's a steering column seal. There's actually four of these screws that we have to take out to loose this seal, so we're going to deal with that right there, and then we're going to work on the wiring, which is right there, so let's tackle the... Let's tackle these four screws first. Okay, so... We're just going to separate that. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. And this part just stays with the column, so we'll just leave it alone for right now. And then we're going to We're going to remove this column, the column cover right there. We're going to do that before we go back to the firewall and take the triangular plate out and that way like most of you probably have the plastic column and that way we don't damage the plastic column so I'm going to remove this guy and then we'll come back again now we're going back to the engine compartment side inside the firewall and uh, we're gonna just I put that in there so I wouldn't lose it that's the clamp bolt the clamp comes around here I've already taken it off but you're gonna see this triangular plate here against the firewall and we got to remove those three bolts holding that's the clamp for the column this last one I'm gonna get with an extension Coming through this way. And there's that. All there is left is two 
bolts holding the column up underneath the dash and there's access holes right there under the dash so we're just gonna take our air ratchet put it right up through there Okay, now you see the columns just kind of laying there, and so I'm going to maneuver it and get it out of the way, and then we'll start the install. So I've removed the little shift arm sticking out there. I'm going to slide the column seal on there. If this was going to be a permanent install, I would take this little bracket this little plate off the back of here and put that on but since I'm going to be taking this back off really I'm just doing it showing you for the sake of the video and so you just slide it up there like that and then we'll put the arm back on and we'll get ready to bolt it in okay so now in our preparation for putting this in we've got a deal with the old wires versus the new wires and so the kit comes with its own connectors and and new little wire connectors that you can crimp on but what I'm wanting to do I'm wanting to use the factory connector off of the 76 and so I'm going to take the wires out one at a time and replace them one at one at a time. The colors of my switch are identical to the ones in the 76 and the reason for that is if you look in here in the end of the column what you'll see there is a factory Ford 76 turn signal switch. So I'm just going to transfer those wires over one at a time and then I'll be able to plug it right into the factory harness factory connector. So I've taken the time to slide the column in through the hole. Now we're going to use the same two mounting bolts to bolt it right back up to where it was. You want to put them in not totally tight the first time. We want to leave it a little bit loose while we get the the outer portion prepared. So if you notice the column was slotted so we can actually move this up and down a little bit as well which that gives you some adjustability depending on how tall you are where you want the position of the wheel. So now we're going to go back to the engine compartment side. We're going to mount up the triangular plate, give it a little more stability, and then we'll be able to push the seal down into position and come back and basically plug in the wires. How easy is that? Okay, so I'm just going to tighten back up the triangular plate. I've got my, my bolt started. Again, I'll get the other side with an extension and then we've got the clamp bolt I'm going to tighten that down I can simply now if you take a look over here see if we can see it there what I'm going to do here so I'm just going to grab this steering shaft with the rag joint that is literally going to go right back on where it was I've got to take the bolt back out and position it where I want 